Kita-kita pa rin tayo sa ating mga victory group. Narito ang ilan sa mga pwede niyong gamitin. Facebook Messenger Mayroong group video call ng Facebook. Buksan ang group chat. Pindutin ang icon na ito. Hintayin ang iba na makapasok sa call. Pwede din gamitin ang Zoom ng libre. Gumawa lang ng account. I-click ang Schedule a Meeting. Kopyahin ang link at ipadala sa iyong Victory Group. O kaya naman ay gamitin ang Group Audio Call sa Viber. I-download lang ang app at mag-sign up. Kahit pa offline o online, magkita-kita pa rin tayo bilang isang church community upang magbahagi ng buhay sa isa't isa at sama-samang lumago sa pananampalataya. Magkita-kita pa rin tayo sa mga Victory Groups!
Good morning everyone! Magandang umaga! Welcome to our morning worship service. I'm Fidel, I'm one of the pastors in Victory Paranaque and I'm excited to worship God this morning. I hope you're excited as well to worship God in your homes. And I want to read in 1st John chapter 3 verse 1 where it is written, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is who you are, that is who we are. And you know, one of the great things about Christianity is us believers, we get to experience having a relationship with God, a relationship that, you know, having an almighty father, a good, good father, and us as children. And it's not because of what we have done or what we can do, but because of the faithfulness of God. He sent His one and only Son so that you and I can be sons and daughters of God. Amen? And that's why He deserves all the worship and honor and praise. Let's just pray right now. Lord, marami pong salamat. Thank you, God, that you are a good, good Father. And thank you, Jesus, for giving your life so that we can be sons and daughters of God. We are children of God. That is who we are. And we're so grateful, Lord, that we get to experience this, Lord, every single day. And that's why we give you all the praise. That's why we give you honor and glory. We worship you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship God together. Thank you, Jesus, for another opportunity. Calling out my name It's your heart that I hear beating And your love I will proclaim To the nations, generations Let me be your hands and feet For your kingdom, for your glory I lay down my everything Jesus, we are here now. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. Jesus, you are with us. Send us in your name. Send us in your name. Jesus, fill us with compassion. Open up our eyes to see. The broken and the weary, how you long to set them free. Oh, we long for your presence, oh God. Come on, sing it. Jesus, we are here now. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. Jesus, you are with us. Send us in your name, send us in your name, Jesus, we are here now. Fill us with your love, fill us with your love, Jesus, you are with us. Send us in your name, send us in your name. your overflow we want to be part of your overflow overflow we want to see want to see your glory fall we want to see want to see your glory fall we want to see want to see your glory fall glory fall Jesus we are here now 
fill us with your love. Jesus, we are here now. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. Jesus, you are with us. Send us in your name. Send us in your name.
Lord, you deserve all the praises and glory and majesty and honor. You deserve all, God. You are worthy of all our praise. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Palapakan po natin yung ating Panginoon. He deserves all our praises, right? Good morning once again. If you are new in our worship service, I'm Fidel. I'm one of the pastors in Victory Paranaque. And we do two things, which is to honor God. Whatever we do, we honor natin si God and we make disciples. And when we say we make disciples, it starts in our homes. And to the parents here, uh, tayo po yung first uh, small group leader. Tayo po nag, first na nag-disciple sa mga anak natin. And in light with that, we want to invite all the fathers okay, uh, here, those who have six to nine years old, Meron po tayong Me and My Dad Camp, okay, do-it-yourself uh, edition. And it's a great time wherein you uh, get to, um, in a way, foster your relationship with your kids or your kid. And also to help them grow in their walk with God. Okay? So it, this will start next week. And so if you are interested and we want to encourage you, kindly register, okay? And can you take a picture of this link? Here in your on your screen. Okay? Another thing that we will have, which is later, is we will have our Welcome to Victory Paranaque Fun Millie Edition, and it will be a great time, okay? Where we will have uh, fellowship and fun at the same time. And you all know it's a challenge this season to meet, okay? But the Bible says we are to meet together, not give up meeting together, okay? In sabi nga sa Hebrews. And God has given us this gift, which is uh, online, where we can meet still, pero virtual. Pero amazing pa rin that we get to still spend time with each other. And that's why we want to encourage you later, okay? We have this link on your screen. Kindly take a picture, and then we will see you later at the 2 p.m. Uh, Welcome to Victory Paranaque. And in our time of our giving, I want to read in Luke chapter 12, okay? And it says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Okay? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I want to commend all of you because I've heard so many stories of your generosity, of you not shrinking back in your faith. And I want to commend you for that because we know where our heart is and it's in the kingdom of God. Amen. And again, I want to commend all of you because uh, God sees our hearts. God sees your heart. And the Bible says that if we're faithful with what we have, God will entrust us with much. And I'm going to believe that this year, God will uh, surprise you. God will amaze you because He is faithful. He is faithful. That's why we put our trust in Him. Let's just pray right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Of your faithfulness God you're faithful Lord and the reason why Lord, we can be faithful in our giving because you have been so faithful Lord ever since you're faithful before you're faithful now and you are faithful forever and we just want to thank you for that Lord I just want to pray Lord for all our church members God I just believe Lord I just see this year Lord there's going to be surprises uh, you'll amaze them God and I pray Lord that we we'll continuously be uh, excited uh, in waiting excited to be uh, in patience and because lord you're go going to do amazing things this year lord we declare that god in jesus name we pray amen amen and if you're giving okay we do have gcash okay and if you want to know more of our different platforms where you can give online kindly watch this video
Good morning to all the passionate followers of Christ here in Victory Paranaque. What a year to be alive. Would you agree with me? God has not forsaken and will not forsake those who earnestly seek Him with all their hearts. And I'm referring to all of you who are following Jesus no matter what the situation may be. To all the Victory Group leaders, the interns, the members, the ministry heads, and the volunteers, join us. Let's be in faith. On May 1, 10 a.m., we're going to have our online discipleship conference. God has a word for us. God wants to minister to all of us. In fact, it's open and free for everyone. So let's invite our friends, our loved ones, our family members, and let's believe that God would minister to them as well. So let's all mark our calendar. May 1, 10 a.m., all across the Philippines po ito. It will be streamed in our Facebook page. And let's expect that God will show to us what He wants us to do and how He wants us to act. Today, God has a word for us. I'm excited to share to us the word of God. Pag-uusapan po natin our hope in this long journey of obedience to God. Because kahit saan man tayo sa journey natin sa Panginoon, maring bago pa tayo or matagal na tayo, we want to make sure that it's all worth it at the end. Right? But sometimes, in this long journey of obedience, obeying God would somehow look like boring at times. Sounds boring. Sometimes, yun yung sinasabi ng mga anak ko. Or maybe, it can appear or look like it's overwhelming. Para ang hirap, lalong-lalo na pag may pinapagawa sa isi, ganda parang hindi ko kaya, it's way beyond me. Maybe, it can also appear like or look like it's a killjoy moment that you want to do this stuff. But God is telling you, ah, uh -uh, no, that's a sin. Di ba parang ang hirap? Or here, sinasabi ng mundo that following God is outdated or unpopular. Right? Lalong-lalo na. Pag hirap na hirap tayo sa pagsunod kay Kristo, tapos pag nakikita natin yung mga kakilala natin, yung mga kaibigan natin, parang nagpaparty sa kasalanan na parang walang katapusan, nakakainis, di ba? Or minsan, nakakaingit. Hmm. Aminin. But, add to that, the trials, the hurts, the pains, the tears. Alam, hirap na hirap na tayo, parang Lord, Kailan ba ito matatapos? When will this stop? But you know, God has a hope prepared for us. May pag -asa. No matter how chaotic our world is or our world will get, God has a restoration plan for us. He can't be stopped. He, can't, he won't be hindered. And it's a, a, a hope for this long obedience with God is attached to this restoration plan of God. So I'd like all of us to open our Bibles in Isaiah 65. Read with me in verses 17 to 19 and let us hear God's word. It says here, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be gladness. I rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. Let's pray. Panginoon, pinapanalangin ko ang lahat ngayon na nalulungkot who are in distress, who are mourning for all who are fearful and feeling this hopelessness. And even on the other hand, this apathy. We come before you to bless the preaching of your word. We hear what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Every day for many days, I've been looking at my Facebook account and I've heard sounds of weeping. I've seen cries of distress for people I know, even people I don't know, about their loved ones passing away because of COVID. Because of COVID. I just can't go numb or get dumb about that about our situation especially our situation here in our nation but honestly tell you the truth 
looking at those things, I'm drowned many times with the feelings of hopelessness. Can you can you feel me? Diba? But just looking at that, I'm drowned with that feeling of hopelessness. Nakikita natin yung situation ng mga mahal natin sa buhay or yung mga kilala natin. And this is just by looking at a Facebook post. Now, for those who are experiencing this loss, I would like to say my deepest and sincerest condolences to you and to your family. Panalangin ko na ang presensya ng Diyos, yung pagmamahal niya, yung kapayapaan niya, ang magpapanumbalik sa kalakasan mo at sa uh, pananampalataya mo sa Kanya. Now, I'm just talking about one issue here, pandemic. Look at other issues that we're facing here in our nation. The corruption in our government, the, the broken families, the teenage pregnancies, rape, killings, uh, the poverty ratio, the dirty politics, our agricultural problems, our national debt. I mean, dekada na ang binilang nito. At para sa ating mga mamayan, sometimes parang normal na lang siya, na parang wala lang sa atin. I have a sense, I have a sense that uh, the people who would like to escape this uh, feelings of hopelessness, who wouldn't want to be, wouldn't want to be drowned with these feelings of hopelessness, will just go numb, na parang walang nangyari, or parang dumb, na parang ignorante in our situation today. If we think obedience is hard, restoration is much harder. Tama po ba? It's much harder. Just try to solve one of those problems. Mapapapray ka talaga. You know, here in this book of Isaiah, in chapters um, 40 to 55, it speaks about a display of God's mighty power amidst all the impossibilities for these Jews who are exiled in Babylon. For 70 years, amidst all that impossibilities na makakabalik pa sila sa bansa nila, sa bayan nila, God declared na mangyayari yun and God was able to uh, to do it. In chapters 56 to 66, that impossibility become became a reality. Itong mga to, itong mga remnant na to, nakabalik sila sa bayan nila. They were restored. They were now back at home. How powerful our God is, right? But at this time, when you look at this time, Jerusalem was still a patched city. Parang patsi-patsi yung bayan na yan. Most of, it, most of it are still rubble. Walls have been erected. Remember Nehemiah? Walls have been erected. Speaks about their their protection, their identity, their, uh, there will be no more shame. Uh, the temple has been built. Remember Zechariah and Haggai and Zerubbabel. The temple has been rebuilt, but but it's none compared to the glory when Solomon built that temple. Now, the temple is a, a huge thing for the people at that time because their lives evolve around the temple. It speaks about their relationship with God. So, Prayers and pleadings of people have been made in Isaiah 64. You would see it there. So, in this chapter that we're talking about, in verse in chapter 65, God now reveals His plans, not just for Jerusalem, but for the world. For the world. Not just for the Jewish believers, but for the Gentile believers. So here now, God is calling the people to pay attention. Alam ko, ang daming distraction natin ngayon sa pinagdadaanan natin ngayon. But hear me out. God is calling you and me to pay attention just like how God is calling the people at their times to pay attention. This chapter alone, seven times, the word behold, meaning to pay attention. To pay attention which, uh, to a fact or a truth upon which action is to be taken. So, let me share to us right now as we pay attention Okay? To these two attentions of God's restoration sa buhay natin as we follow Him. The first one is this. God will punish those who stubbornly seek Him in their own terms. God will punish those who stubbornly seek Him in their own terms. This first attention of restoration speaks about God's justice. This is for the people who went numb and dumb in their relationship with God. 
Paano yun? Basahin natin verse 6 of chapter 65. Behold, pay attention. It is written, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay. Twice. He will indeed repay both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together. You know what? Looking at this verse, this is sad. This is from one generation to another. The father, the parents, passing the generational curse to another son, to, to his children, and then the children is passing it to another. It's like a multi-generational curse. If there's one thing that we can pass on, fathers, parents, to our children, I pray that it's our relationship with God. But this one, they have went dumb and dumb in their relationship with God because they made offerings on the mountains and insulted God on the hills. Paano nga ba to? Tingnan natin, how did they went numb and dumb in their relationship with God? Verse 2, we can see it here. These people turn their backs on God. These people make wrong turns. They insist on doing things their own way. Pagka-rebelde. Lalapit kay God, tatawag kay God, atin sa church, minsan nagpa-fast pa, pero pagbalik, just going back to their own way, to our own ways. Hindi natin, hindi tayo sumusunod sa salita ng Diyos. Alam natin na mali yun, but we are intentionally disobeying God. We are rebelling against God. Watch out. We need to watch out. Maybe we have already went numb in our relationship with God. And not just that. These are the people who worships idols. In verse 3, worships created images, the works of their hands. We have not stopped to think, Tama pa ba to? If I'm seeking God, is this God's terms or is this only my own term? Ito mga parada na to, ito mga piesta, ito mga tradisyon. We have not stopped to think, is this right to worship the saints? To worship Mama Mary? To worship Santo Nino? We have to stop and ask God, Lord, ito ba yung sinasabi mo? Because God is angry at this one. Maybe we have went numb and dumb in our relationship with God. They worship the dead. I mean, we, we People who are spiritist, lalapit tayo sa mga pahula-hula, yung mga spiritista, yung mga uh, zodiac signs, all of these things. God does not want it. God hates it. God is angry with this one. We're not just rebellious. We can be idolatrous, following God, seeking God in our own terms. We think we're following God, but we are actually seeking God in our own terms. But not just that. We can be also self-righteous. Look at this in verse 5 or 65. I am too holy for you. Alam mo yun, we're trying to do something and we think we're, we're right and we think we are holier than thou. Pag tumitingin tayo sa iba, no, it's my works. I, I, I am better than you. And we think it's our own good works that will save us. We know this already, but this can be self-righteous and God hates it. Kaya nga, ang sabi ng Diyos dito, looking at this, these are the smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Rebellious. Idolatrous, self-righteous people will be punished. Will be punished. I pray we won't be like this. Panalangin ko sa sarili ko. Panalangin ko sa atin na sumusunod sa kanya. Truth of the matter is, may mga hints tayo of rebelliousness, of uh, idolatry, of self-righteousness. We need to go back to God. and Let's not get numbed or dumb in our relationship with God. Balik tayo sa kanya. Balik tayo sa kanya. But here's the, the hope that we have. Here, listen to this. But for us who are in this long journey of obeying God, listen, whatever injustice or abuse we may experience here on earth, and the people who have done it against us, they may escape. They may escape justice in the land, but they will never escape the divine justice of God. This is the hope for us as we follow God no matter what in this long journey of obedience. At the end of the tunnel, there's that divine justice waiting for those people who may have hurt us, who may have done injustice to us. So, I would like to encourage us, vengeance is the Lord's. Let God deal justice to these people. We'll see the big difference at the end. Mahikita natin. In fact, verse 13 to 14 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, my servant shall eat, but you shall be hungry. See? My servants shall drink, behold, but you shall be thirsty. Pay attention to this, guys. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be put to shame. Those people who went numb and dumb in the relationship with God. Behold, my servants shall sing for gladness of heart. That's us. But you 
those again who stubbornly seek God in their own terms, rebelde, idolatrous, self-righteous, they shall cry out for pain of heart and shall wail for the breaking of the spirit. This leads me to the second attention of God's restoration as we look into this. Second one is this, God will preserve those who seek and obey Him. He will preserve those who seek and obey Him. God preserved Noah and his family from the flood. God preserved Moses and Israel from the angel of death. God preserved David from the sword and spear of Goliath. God preserved Daniel and his three friends from execution. God preserved Rahab and Ruth and many more. God will preserve the lives of those who earnestly seek Him and obeys Him. But just like them, we will still face the pains of this world, the fallenness of this world, the hurts, the tears. We will still face the consequences of our own mistakes. Kamali si Noah, nagkamali si Moses, nagkamali si David, and they faced their own consequences. Tyrin. But, but, pay attention. Nothing beats the restoration that God has created and prepared for us. Walang makakapagkumpara. Tingnan natin to. In verse 17 and 19 of 65, we see it here. For behold, pay attention. I create new heavens and new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. This is a place where the pains in the past, the pains that we have on earth, will be totally forgotten. All of those tears, all of those mourning, all of the sound of weeping, the cries of distress, they will be forgotten. Totally forgotten. What a beautiful picture this is. This is in line with Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, no more mourning, no more crying, no pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. What a place of restoration. People will try to escape things dahil sa paghihirap natin dito sa mundo. But you see, if you try to kill yourself, we think that would be an escape if we are not followers of Christ. It may not be an escape. It may be, it may be an entrance to eternal destruction. But for us who are following Him, there is a restoration awaiting for us here. A place where the past pains, past hurts, past tears, past distresses will be totally forgotten. Sulit, di ba? Para sa mga mananampalataya sa Diyos, sulit that at the end of the tunnel, there is this place that God has for us. But wait, there's more. Hindi lang natin makakalimutan yung mga pains in the past, the distresses in the past, in that place. Verse 18 says here, But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, pay attention, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. How many times this word would pop up? Glad, rejoice, joy, gladness, glad, Rejoice! This is a place for... It is a joyful place. Hindi lang natin makakalimutan yung nakaraan, yung mga pains. This is a joyful place filled with joyful people and filled with the joy of God. Joyful place, joyful people, joyful God. I mean, walang binatbat yung lahat ng mga championships, yung mga lahat ng mga celebrations dito sa mundo with this place that God has for us. It's going to be filled with joy. Experiencing the joy of God. Have you experienced the joy of God? Diba parang so overwhelming na parang whatever situation problems na meron tayo, we can just move forward. Imagine that. That ten, na million times magnified with God, with the people around us in that place. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. But there's more. Tingnan natin. 
Verse 20, it's going to be a permanent life. Here's an impression that uh, this life will not be cut short. Young man shall die a hundred years, and a sinner a hundred years shall be considered a curse. It's a picture of a life not cut short. It's a permanent life that we will have with God. It's not just that. It's also a productive life. We're going to enjoy the works of our hands just like a, a tree. Like a tree. It's like we were going to enjoy it to the fullest. We're going to use our lives and we're going to really enjoy our relationship with God. It's not just a permanent life. It's going to be a productive life, mga kapatid. And it's also an intimate life with God. Verse 24, Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Wow! Intimate life with God. When we receive the Word of God, when we have our own quiet time, di ba sobrang nabuhayan tayo? Ito, bago pa lang tayo magsasalita ka sa Panginoon, he will speak to us. There will just, it's just that intimacy with God. But not just that. There's also peaceful life with others. Verse 25, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. Permanent life. Productive life. Peaceful life with others. Intimate life with God. Ano pa bang healingin natin? Can you imagine this kind of life that's awaiting for us? Nothing in this world, no government, no kings, no presidents is, president is able to create this kind of restoration. No one. God is the sole creator of this kind of restoration. In covenant people of God, this won't be possible apart from Christ. That's why in Isaiah 63, God gave a vision to Isaiah about a person whose garment is red. Red. And that's alluded in Revelation 19 as well. It's a garment who's uh, dipped in blood. And that's Jesus Christ. And the, the followers, great armies, are, the, the garments are colored in white. That represents the church. We have been purified because of the sacrifice of Jesus. He is, he is the God who's mighty to save. Together with the vengeance, the redemption, the salvation, the righteousness, si God lang ang nagagawa nito through Christ and is able to restore us back to Him. Pay attention. Pay attention. God's justice. God will punish those who stubbornly seek God in our own terms, but God will also preserve us as we hope in this long journey of obeying God, God will preserve us. There's a preservation for us that's going to be a life that's filled with joy. Life that's filled, that's filled with the joy of God as well. Just what I just mentioned to you. Because of this, what kind of church should we be? What kind of church should we be? Nung klase. Well, verse 66, chapter 66 rather, says it here. Ito sinabi ni God. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? All these my hands have made, so all these things came to be and declare, declares the Lord. Now, the attention now shifts. Kanina, we're paying attention to God, what He's doing, the restoration. Now, it shifts to the church. But this is the one to whom I will look. One who is humble, contrite in spirit, and trembles at my word. More than just beautiful buildings, church. God is looking for a church for His people who would be humble. Not necessarily strong, humble because God will give us the strength. Humble meaning devoted to God. No matter what, what we feel, we may feel weak, we may feel insignificant at times, and dami natin napagdadaanan, but God is looking for people who would be devoted to Him, who will not seek Him according to their own terms, but will be devoted to God, humble, a contrite church, contrite in spirit, who would be repentant, we will be repentant. When God would tell to us, that's wrong, we would come to God. We will not be rebellious. And we will be stubborn. We will be repentant before God. God is looking for that kind of church. Will we be that kind of church? God is looking for a kind of church who would, be, who would fear Him, who would tremble at His word, who would revere the words of God. That when God speaks to us, the, His word, His commands, we would, we would tremble. We would say, this is the word of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and this needs to be obeyed. Help me, O God. Wow, will we be that kind of church in the city of Paranaque that God is looking to? God is paying attention, looking at our hearts. 
will we be that kind of people that we will be repentant, we will be devoted to God, we will be in awe, will revere His words? Because if we respond right, listen to this, if we respond right, here's the promise of God for His church and for His people. Sabi ni God, I live in chapter 57, I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. To revive, repeat that after me, say revive. Twice, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Meaning, God will bring revival to the church. For many times, or many years, many months, we may feel like we are a dead church, but no, we're not the dead church. Maybe we are just sailing, uh, sailing through this pandemic. Now is the time to respond right, to be repentant, to be devoted to God, to, to be in awe with His Word, to say, God, revive your church. God will revive His church. God will revive you. God will revive me, revive us. He will this is, by the way, another kind of restoration, right? God will revive the church. Revival will happen in the people of God, in the house of God. Would you want to join? Would you be in faith and respond right? I believe that's God's word for us as a church here in Victory Paranaque. He wants to revive this church so that we can be salt and light in the city. Let us seek Him in this way. This is the way the way we hope in our long journey of obedience to God. Church, let's be spirit-empowered just like how Christ did in His ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon Him. And because of that, we can be salt and light to our family, to our community, to the campuses, to the city. We continue to bring the good news to the poor. Comfort to those who are brokenhearted, to those who are mourning, to those who are weeping. To proclaim freedom to those who are captive, to those who are in bondage with sin to preach the good news to them. Church, we are not just recipients of this future awesome restoration that God has for us, but we are also agents, agents of restoration today. A church that experiences a revival can be an agent of God's revival to the city. It starts with us. Will we respond right? If we respond right, if we are devoted to God, if we come before God de fully dependent on Him, trembling at His words, believing His words, trusting His words, if we are that kind of church, not turning to idols, not turning to our own ways, then as agents of restoration, we can expect this to happen. In Isaiah 61, 4, says here, speaks about God's people, God's church. They will rebuild ancient ruins, repair cities destroyed long ago. Think about that. Repair, rebuild ancient ruins. Think about rebuilding the morality of the youth, rebuilding the morality of our leaders, rebuilding the morality of our government leaders, uh, social justice, repairing cities that are destroyed long ago, repairing social justice, repairing relationships with uh, broken families, reviving those who are deserted for many generations, reviving, loving, for others loving for the city, loving for for our fellow 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 men, loving the campus, loving the city. And this week we had an opportunity to show that. Love the city. By the way, we are launching it. We have launched it yesterday. We have launched this one and in fact last Thursday we had an opportunity in in, in collaboration with Cons, Consul, Councillor Wahoo. We're able to uh, be able to bless medical frontliners, medical staff, yung mga doctors, yung mga vaccination team. We went to SMBF and we are able to uh, send a, a bring home present to encourage them that church is here and we are expecting more. We are praying that Love the City will not just be a program, it will be a lifestyle for us. Ulitin ko, no? Love the City is not just a program, it will be a lifestyle for us. Whatever God would put in our hearts, small is big. Kaya, if you want to join this, Message us. Message us. We are going to uh, help those who are uh, COVID patients in Hospital ng Paranaque too. We're going to give vitamin C. And, and to those who are our members who are also infected with COVID, we're going to do it together. And let's pray, God, Lord, help us. Revive your church that this will be, 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 uh, will be salt and light towards our neighbors, our communities in this city. In this city. Thank you, God. Our hope, 
in this long journey of obeying God is not simply becoming recipients, but agents of God's restoration. That's our hope. Not just waiting for the future glory. The future restoration is going to be awesome. Yes, but we are also believing that today we're going to be agents of God's restoration. In the same breath, Paul encourages the believers with the same thought. And he said it here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, in light with this restoration, in light with this victory that we have, future and today, stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. No matter what pains on her, stand firm. There is revival that's going to happen to us here. There's restoration that's waiting for us in the future. We can be agents of restoration. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. That's my encouragement for us. It's an application. Let's always give ourselves fully. Let's not be half-hearted. Let's be full-hearted. Be passionate. Say, God, I will give myself fully to your work, God. Ano ito, Panginoon? Pakita mo sa akin. Pakita mo sa simbahan. Bakit? Here's what Apostle Paul says. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's not in vain. It's all worth it. At the end, it's all worth it. Today, it's all worth it because God is our hope of restoration. This is the restoration plan that God has for us. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, maraming salamat sa salita mo. Maraming salamat, Lord, that you you are stirring up our hearts to be devoted to you, to respond in a way that we would fear your word, we would fear you, and we would be repentant when we would tell us our mistakes, our sins. I pray that as a church, we will be like that, O oh God. If you are praying to, be, to have that kind of heart, devoted, repentant, who have the fear of God and would tremble at His words, would revere His words, would you raise up your hands to God wherever you are? Just ask God, Lord, revive my family, revive me. Revive your church here in Paranaque, Panginoon. We want to be a church that's devoted, repentant, kung ano man yung kasalanan na pinakita sa'yo ng Diyos ngayon. Let's repent before God. Patawarin mo kami, Panginoon. Tulungan mo kami, sundid ka. To always focus our eyes on you. To trust you. Trust you. To reveal your words. And trust your words. In the name of Jesus. If you're praying for revival in your family, in your walk with God, now is the time. Seek God with all of your heart. Let's not be casual before God. Let's really cry out to God now. Lord, Panginoon, tulungan mo ako. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, as we come to you in humility. Help us, Lord. Revive our family. Revive our relationship with you. Revive your people, O oh God. Revive your church. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We're praying to be salt and light in the city. We're thinking, I want to participate in that one. Love the city. I want that to be a lifestyle, not just a program. Message us and let's pray. Let's pray together. Panginoon, tulungan mo kami to respond right, to come to you, God, that will be salt and light in the city of Paranaque and beyond. Whatever the city needs, help us to walk, to, to, to follow you, God. You will determine our steps. We need wisdom. We need a unity, Panginoon, that you will be the one to show us the, the way, the opportunities, your opportunities, God, to be able to serve these people so that we won't Try to do things for our own sake lang, Panginoon. But we will do these things, not just to feel good, but really because we are agents of restoration. You have restored us. You have revived us. You are the ones who fill us to the full. Your life. We claim this for us as church. We thank you. We honor you, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I pray that the Word of God has encouraged you today. Church, we are sending you to be salt and light to wherever God has called you to go and whoever God has called you to minister. Preach the gospel. Comfort those who are mourning. Speak freedom to those who are in bondage of sin. And together as a church, let's do it. You are not alone. Small is big. Whatever we can do, God is looking at the heart, not at the amount, not at the things that we give, but our hearts. Pagpalain po kayo ng Diyos. Maraming salamat at enjoy your week today. God bless you 
everyone. Enjoy your Sunday.